combat resolution in Advanced Dungeons & Dragons just got a lot easier. Welcome to another Dragonland Saga Creator episode. My name is Adam, and today I am recreating the Dragon Magazine Combat Computer by Laura and Tracy Hickman. I'd like to take a moment and thank the members of this YouTube channel, and invite you to consider becoming a member by visiting the link in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonland's gaming materials using my affiliate links. I am referencing Dragon Magazine number 74 from June 1983, the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons Player's Handbook and Dungeon Master Guides, in addition to the Mage of the Striped Tower blog for this video. If I leave anything out or misspeak, please leave a comment below. My degree and profession is in graphic design. Having to create art from low-resolution images is unfortunately part of my life. After becoming aware of the Dragon Magazine Combat Calculator, I felt that it would benefit me as a dungeon master who truly loves Advanced Dungeons & Dragons to get my hands on a copy. After some cursory searches online, I became aware of someone who already recreated and enhanced the Dragon Magazine's version. Rather than use what someone else had done, I thought it'd be fun to make it myself, so I started by finding a PDF of the Dragon Magazine issue with a scanned version of the combat computer and imported it into Adobe Illustrator CC to recreate it. Recreating art can be a long and arduous project, but with experience you can use tricks of the trade to speed it up. The first thing I learned was that the original art wasn't perfectly symmetrical, so I redesigned it to be just that. I kept the original images on a template layer so I could build on other layers over top of it. I used overlapping shapes, adding and removing them to complete the design. I kept the artwork, type, and modifiers on their own layers for ease of access. I also worked at normalizing type, angles, and distances of content to produce a more perfect version of the original. When it was complete, I printed each out on the heaviest weight paper I had in the house. I ended up with 67 pound vellum Bristol cardstock. When it was printed, I used an X-Acto blade and cutting board to cut out the different layers. Then, I used a 1-inch brass fastener to connect the two layers, allowing space to rotate each. With the combat computer recreated, let's examine how it is used. Combat is always broken down into three basic steps. Who goes first? One person attacks something. If hit, they calculate damage, rinse and repeat. To determine who goes first in Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, each side rolls d6s, and the higher roll goes first. The inner number ring is the armor class, and the outer number ring is the two-hit number. To determine your two-hit number, the number you need to roll over with a d20, line up the pointer on the edge of the plate with the number on the inner ring of the base that represents the defender's armor class. Next, find the class level arc for the attacker, and refer to the break line to the left of the arrow. That is what you need to roll to hit. You can then refer to the weapons window for the weapon you are using against that armor class and apply its modifier. This gives you the adjusted two-hit number. Different weapons are more or less effective against different armor classes, as armor classes represent types of armor worn by the defender. This then leads you to the inevitable discussion about apparent versus enhanced armor classes. This applies to armor with magical bonuses applied to them like plus three chainmail. Apparent armor class is the natural armor class for the type of armor, falling between 2 and 10. Enhanced armor class is altered by dexterity, magic items, magic spells, and physical condition. To discover the two-hit number with an enhanced armor class, line up the plate with the apparent armor class, note the weapon adjustment, then slide to the enhanced number, note the class level break line, and apply the weapon modifier. Roll your d20, and if you hit, roll damage. The defender then attacks back and rinse and repeat. 
This alleviates the need to look at the weapons and combat tables in the player's handbook and Dungeon Master's guides, speeding up combat a bit, which is a net positive for the players and the Dungeon Master. Let's take a look at an example of combat as noted in the original article. First, we roll for initiative. Our fighter rolls the highest of the two with a 3. Our fighter is third level and is attacking an opponent with their battle axe. The opponent is wearing plus 4 chainmail. This grants them an enhanced armor class of 1, as Chainmail's apparent armor class is 5. You line the big arrow up to 5, noting the battle axe weapon modifier of minus 1, then move the big arrow over to 1. The class level breakpoint lands on 17. We apply the weapon modifier of minus 1, and our fighter needs to roll an 18 or above to hit its opponent. He rolls an 18 exactly and hits the opponent, then rolls a d8 for damage, rolling an 8. The opponent now gets to attack and we re-roll initiative for the next round. Again, the combat computer replaces having to review the weapons and combat tables for each attack, speeding up play when you're sitting around the table. Virtual tabletops have replaced the need for this as the math is done for you, but it's still a tool for your in-person games that is invaluable in this Dungeon Master's humble opinion. And that completes this recreation of the Dragon Magazine Combat Computer by Laura and Tracy Hickman. Did you have the Combat Computer when it was originally released? Did you ever find combat resolution in Advanced Dungeons & Dragons challenging? And finally, would you like to see an Advanced Dungeons & Dragons actual play on this channel? Feel free to email me at info at or leave a comment below. I'd like to take a moment and remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, ring the bell to get notified about upcoming videos, and click the like button. This all goes to help other Dragonlance fans learn about this channel and its content. This channel is all about celebrating the wonderful world of the Dragonlance Saga, and I hope you'll join in the celebration. Thank you for watching. This has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, Slanjavar!